This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. I'm Deidre Johnson. This morning on Sunrise, a local community honors the life of a 12-year-old who was hit and killed while riding his bike. Plus, just weeks before primary day, Gresham voters are deciding whether to approve a public safety levy. But first, let's check in with Daisy Caballero for a quick look at the forecast. Hey, Daisy. Hey, Deidre. Happy Mother's Day, Deidre. And also happy Mother's Day to all of those beautiful mothers watching us on this uh, Sunday morning. Uh, giving you a live look at our beautiful city here. The sun officially is up. We're holding 55 degrees and it's going to be another beautiful picture. Perfect day today. A lot more sunshine is in store for us. Quick look at your current temperatures. 49 out in Forest Grove, 47 in Hillsboro. We are in, uh, in the 50s in some areas, including Troutdale, 53, 51 in Happy Valley, and also for parts of the coastline, including Tillamook and Newport at 52 degrees. Now, forecasted temperatures for today up and down the I-5 corridor right about noon. We should be hitting the low 70s, and then by right about 5 o'clock, of course, uh, starting to warm up. Some folks are going to be reaching 80, others just those upper 70s for the most part. This is what the next three days are going to look like. Super nice. For Mother's Day today, 81, 69 for Monday. Sun and clouds, so of course, seeing a kind of dramatic cool down. But uh, don't worry, we start to warm back up. And again, the sunshine is here to stay. For how long? I'll have that answer coming up. All right, thanks so much, Daisy. Well, with the hot weather, local health officials hope they can keep people out of the hospital. Last Mother's Day weekend, Multnomah County had 22 people end up in the emergency room because of heat related illnesses. Friday night, first responders conducted three separate water rescues. A teen in the Clackamas River, two adults at Molten Falls, and a man at Sandy River who became disoriented from the cold water. While everyone made it out safely, we do lose people every year to dangerous waters. Especially areas like the Sandy River or the Willamette River, a lot of the mountain runoff is still very cold. Water temperatures are in the 40s and 50s and haven't quite warmed up to the air temperature yet. Remember, officials won't be patrolling local bodies of water until Memorial Day. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office wants to help you stay safe on the water. You can borrow a life jacket for free at a kiosk in any one of these five parks. With the nicer weather, the Skamania County Sheriff's Office wants to remind you that going hiking can be just as dangerous as getting in the water. The warning comes after first responders rescued a 63 year old Friday afternoon. They fell almost 300 feet down a steep hill near the Dog Mountain Summit. An Army helicopter rescued the hiker. They were flown to a Vancouver hospital and are now in stable condition. Family and friends are paying tribute to a sixth grader who was hit and killed while riding his bike. On Saturday, they gathered for a memorial bike ride in his honor. Ashley Grams has the story. On a hot Saturday afternoon, dozens gathered in Hillsboro to remember Joe Brosson. Every day I walk by his empty room. Every day I walk by all of our memories. Sarah Brosson's 12 year old son was hit by a car and killed while riding his bike in February. Police say the driver stayed at the scene and did not face charges. You take three seconds to not pay attention and you've taken someone's life. Family and friends came together for a memorial bike ride and walk. Riding to Lincoln Street Elementary School. The path Joe would have taken the day he was killed Joe was on his way to play basketball with a friend. Joe wasn't doing anything wrong. He was taking care of himself and he was going out to play basketball as any 12 year old should be able to do. Noah Langenwalter helped organize the ride. He's part of a community biking group called Ride West Side. I do connect to this very much as a dad, as a father. I want my kid to be able to have an independent childhood like I had. After arriving at the school, bikers and walkers made their way back here to the spot where Joe lost his life to install a memorial bike in his honor. And I wish that we were had been able to give Joe the safety that it, that he deserved. This type of memorial is often called a ghost bike. And while it's meant to honor Joe's life, it needs to be safer. We all deserve to see our kids at the end of the day. I don't get to see mine. His mother hopes it will serve as a reminder to every driver who passes by to slow down and be more aware. This is still a community and we still need to watch out for each other. Ashley Grams, KGW News. 
On Friday night, Portland police led a large scale stolen vehicle operation. The operation ended with seven arrests and the recovery of four stolen vehicles. During one stop, police officers seized two guns. One was illegally modified to fire automatically. The bureau says they discovered one stolen car for every two stops. The Central Bike Squad helped capture a man who allegedly fired a gun in downtown Portland. It happened around 4.45 p.m. on Thursday by Southwest 12th and Burnside. On Friday, an officer found the man around 3 near Providence Park. The man, a convicted felon, dropped a bag and tried to run away. He was quickly arrested. Officers found a handgun and some drugs. We're less than two weeks away from Oregon's primary. In Gresham, voters will decide whether to approve a levy that would provide funding to hire more first responders. As Alan McCarty has all the details. At Station 74 in Gresham. So we've held fire station open houses throughout this, kind of to educate the community. A chance to learn, to see up close what firefighters have and what they lack. Gresham's population has grown significantly over the years. Well, we have the same number of firefighters we have every day since 1990. We are pretty much at a breaking point and we need help. Kevin Larson, Gresham Fire's union president, explains that to retain staff and hire on more, voters will need to approve a public safety levy. If passed, the owner of a home assessed at $200,000 would pay about $25.65 per month or about $308 per year. My hope is that the, the community sees the, the need for investment in public safety and that they vote yes on the ballot box. We're behind the eight ball. We're trying to catch up. Sergeant Matt Galbraith leads the Gresham Police Officers Association. This levy covers Gresham PD too. This levy is still well below national standard for delivery. It's one of those, I think we can get there. I think the community could do this they have to want to do it. In 2023, voters rejected a similar levy, so the city went back to the drawing board. They had it before them a year ago. Um, the The value of that was changed from a dollar fifty, and it was lessened to hopefully get a yes vote because the need's realistic and the need for the police department is exponential. Both police and fire fear the consequences should voters deny funding once again. Fire department, the police department want to be able to serve, but we only have so many resources to dedicate to that. We want to be the fire department that responds, you know, when minutes matter. It's really important that we get there. Alma McCarty, KGW News. It's a big day for the Portland Trail Blazers. The NBA draft lottery is at noon, and the Blazers will find out where they'll pick in this year's draft. The Blazers have a 13% shot at landing the number one pick and a 50% chance at a top four pick. The last time the Blazers landed the number one pick was back in 2007 when they drafted Greg Oden.